Hello and welcome to Young Turks, the show that puts the spotlight on two young achievers every single week and takes you through their journey to success. I'm Shireen Bhan and joining me on the show is Anita Balagopalan. Hi Anita. Hi Shireen. My guest for today is one of India's most prolific ad filmmakers. Meet Abhinay Deo, but that's a little later on the show. For now, it's back to Shireen. My guest today has an impressive success story. He turned entrepreneur at just 22 with 50,000 rupees in his pocket. And six years down the line, the company that he founded, Magnum Solutions, is turning in revenues of 2.5 crores. Let's catch up with Vineet Bajpai, the founder of Magnum Solutions, also an author and a teacher. All of that at just 28. <laughs> Buy what it takes to be an entrepreneur at 22 and you'll get some straight talk. Willpower, a small but solid team and faith in oneself. Armed with a degree in economics and an MBA, Winip kick-started his career with a short stint at GE Capital. But within six months, he decided to follow his heart and get into the tech business independently. Magnon Solutions, a web-based interactive media company, came to life in a rented generator room with two computers, 50,000 rupees in capital and three other committed entrepreneurs. Magnon now has stocked up over 700 clients in six years and does business worth half a million dollars a year. But the beginning wasn't exactly a dream start. Sometimes it's good to be 22 when you start a business because you don't really uh, uh, do all that due diligence which is required and required. And as they say that sometimes when you do too much of uh, uh, thinking and researching, you move from analysis to paralysis. So when I was just 22, I did not really uh, research so much. It was more of gut feel. Yes, it took about uh, a good six to eight months for me to uh, decide that I was going to do this and finally decide how I was going to do mm. this. And I was working, uh, you know, during those six to eight months. And after that, as, as you rightly said, uh, uh, you know, we started in a generator room and, uh, you know, which was uh, on the top floor of uh, a building in Lajpatnagar and uh, in New Delhi. And it was the summer month of May, on the 9th of May, that's our uh, annual day we started. And we used to, you know, we were three, four of us, and we used to get roasted in that little room because we didn't even have money to put blinds on the glass windows. Blood, sweat, and tears. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> Not absolutely. just metaphorically. Absolutely. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but, but uh, you know, when we look back uh, at those days now, we feel really proud and we, uh, we, we laugh about it and we feel, uh, we hug each other. You know, the four of us are still together and we hug each other and... Uh, uh, so so it's, it was very exciting. Yeah. So 700 clients now, but you know, when you bagged your first one, it couldn't have been an easy task to actually go and sell yourself. What was that experience actually uh, like to tell people that, listen, bet on us, we're, we're worth it? Okay. Uh, the first for the first business that we got wasn't really too much of a big bet for a client because it was very, very low value. And uh, But I do agree that, you know, it's very tough when you go to a client and say, uh, look, this is who we are. And he says, okay, who all have you worked for? And you say, nobody, you're the guinea pig. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was very tough. But uh, I think uh, uh, when you're really determined to get something going and when you're, uh, uh, you know, you've sold the idea to yourself and you believe in yourself, I think it starts showing on your face. And uh, there are always a whole lot of people in this world who would want to trust uh, newcomers, who would want to give them opportunities. Mm -hmm. And I think we were lucky in that sense. So there was no disappointment initially when you were actually starting off with doors being slammed in your face. They, I mean, you know, that, that's the typical entrepreneurial story of, of sort of clients saying, no, well, we need to give somebody else a shot because they've probably got a lot more experience. How much of that played a, a part in you wanting to strive and achieve the kind of success that you have met with? A lot, a lot. I think that was one of the biggest drivers because uh, what happens is uh, uh, I think it is failures which... Uh, uh, which make you thirsty for success, mm. you know, and uh, when we started out, you're very right, uh, I won't name uh, an organization, but there was a guy who almost threw us out, uh, threw one of my people out of his uh, uh, office because my, you know, person didn't, uh, was insisting to mm. sell and would not move out of the office. So we, we've seen a whole lot of that. Uh, we would go to big organizations and they would ask uh, us, uh, you know, uh, how many people are you? What's the kind of infrastructure? Can we do an office visit? And there was a no for everything, mm. you know, so it became very tough. But yeah, uh, uh, you know, I think it was, uh, we just knew that we had to do it. Uh, you know, we burnt all our other bridges. We just knew this is the only thing we're going to be doing. Mm. And uh, uh, and we just carried on. And I think it was just determination which uh, initially helped us. So what was the big turning point, really? The big turning point was, uh, I think, when we uh, started working for, uh, uh, you know, the Japanese multinational Daikin Air Conditioners. Mm. That was the first client we could actually start uh, going and talking about to other clients and, you know, mm. start telling them about, uh, you know, that this is what we've done. 
and we're still very good friends with the people who had uh, you know, initially given us that project. But I think what really established us as a good, uh, uh, credible company, a credible organization was uh, when we won the tender of uh, the Ministry of Finance mm. website. Corporate services that Magnum now provides, because obviously you started somewhere, now you have 700 clients down the line. What's the scope of services that you actually provide? We are a full-service, comprehensive, interactive media mm. company. You know, where we would undertake work which is as simple as designing web pages, right down to connecting, uh, uh, you know, global offices uh, using the internet platform. You know, so our, our, we are a full service uh, uh, interactive media company in the sense that we uh, design websites, we develop uh, online applications, we do internet marketing. We are, uh, uh, you know, in fact, I would say we are amongst the best in internet marketing in India. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, along with that, a lot of value adds like animation and multimedia, online gaming, you know, those kind of things. Hard work, sweat and a lot of struggle. That's been life for Vineet Bajpai. While he's lost out on his interests and hobbies, he has no regrets. He's aiming at making Magnum the number one player in web-based solutions in the next five years. So would scaling up mean selling out? As far as the private equity participation is concerned, we would look at that because we would want to ramp up the scale uh, at a certain stage in life. But what we want to do right now is we want to reach a certain level based on our own revenue accruals. Okay. You know, we would probably want to spend another two, three years, reach a scale where we are, uh, uh, you know, we've, we are multi-locational. We've got offices, you know, several places mm -hmm. in India, maybe a couple of offices abroad. A certain scale where uh, where our valuation could probably be far better than what it would be today. What is the kind and, of valuation? Uh, no, I, I, I have no idea. Of that of calculation? <laughs> no, no, we don't. We don't really have that. Okay. No. So, so where I mean, you're currently operating headquartered out of Delhi, and yeah. you said that you have a plan of where you'd like to see yourself, yeah. maybe three or five years down the line. Yeah. Give us, give us the sort of ideal picture of where you see the company growing to. See, I'll just tell you uh, our vision statement. You know, I'll just tell you what we envision. Uh, what we envision is that uh, we would want to be the number one. And you're, player, you're the uh, vision driver within the company, aren't you? I wouldn't say that. I think no. uh, I think I am. Uh, uh, you know, as they say, uh, uh, just barely first amongst equals huh. because uh, I have a lot of very very good people with me who are probably equally talented, equally driven. But are you more the operations and, uh, man, or are you more the sort of strategic planner? Uh, mostly strategic because uh, it, it transformed actually you know there was a time when I was uh, the operations man the business development man the, the client servicing man mm -hmm. uh, the accountant the, the receptionist you know I was everything at one time but I gradually started uh, you know delegating those things and today I am more in a directional uh, role than operation building from scratch is what this 28 year old has done and excelled in so he decided to put his story on paper Bajpai's first book hit the stands in September 2004 and is a beginner's guide to entrepreneurship. He's now working on his second title, The Barbarian Manager, a non-fiction document inspired by his experiences with these school grads. I was an accidental uh, author oh. because, uh, yeah, because what happened was that uh, this was about four years when I had, uh, you know, uh, been with my company. Mm. And uh, I, I used to lecture at a lot of places, you know, I, li I like were to... You, uh, were you taken seriously because you were, what, 23 or 24? No, there were so many times. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, were, there were so many times when I would walk into the class for the first time and I would go and stand in front of, uh, you know, the, the blackboard and one of the students would say, Bahani, come here. <laughs> you know, so, uh, and then somebody would come and introduce me as their teacher. Yeah. Oh, yeah, it was exciting. But, uh, so what happened? was that uh, during those lectures I saw there were a lot of questions mm -hmm. a lot of youngsters who really wanted to know how to start a business what does it really take you know what are the really the practical story behind an entrepreneurial uh, organization so I started uh, writing an essay mm -hmm. you know I thought I'll just write a, about a 10 12 page essay on wh what is it that you're supposed to do and all the things that I had been through and safeguards and you yeah, know okay. so that other people do not really have to reinvent the wheel and uh, when I started writing I realized that the introduction took about 20 pages so, th which is where I thought that might, uh, as well convert might as well convert into a book, yeah. But it was, uh, uh, I, I wrote it with a lot of, uh, 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 you know, sense of purpose. And uh, uh, I, I really believe in every word that is uh, written over there. And every word, every line in that book is uh, actually original, where, uh, you know, every business model, every idea, everything is just an outcome of, uh, you know, my practical uh, learning, learning for, you yeah. know, for the first four or five years of business. Well, that's the book that's already been written. I believe there's another one in the making. Give us a quick snapshot of a preview, if you can, about what's coming up. Okay, it's, uh, uh, it's like saying that uh, the first book was built from scratch. You know, how do you really uh, create a company from nothing? And the second book is called The Barbarian Manager. 
uh, which uh, of course the name is slightly <laughs> spicy, I know, but uh, it's uh, <laughs> but it's uh, it's a book about uh, how to sustain uh, success, hmm. you know. And uh, uh, my first book was about how to create it for the so first time. Shouldn't it be hard not to be a barbarian manager? Uh, well, I'll leave that to the readers. <laughs> okay. that, that's where all the suspense lies. Okay. Yeah. So when are you going to be done with it? Uh, I think another six, eight months, and uh, my publisher, India Research Press, is, is, is also eagerly waiting. For well, we wish you the very best of luck on this journey, Vineet. Thanks Thank very so much, much for taking time out to be with us on Young Turks, and we hope that the company and the books go from strength Thank to strength. So Thanks much. very Thank much. You so much.